My name is Yvine Sassela and I started doing different types of drag, burlesque, just performance in general, makeup about two, two and a half years ago. When I was maybe eight years old, me and my best friends would sneak into my mother's room. We'd play a game and we would see how much makeup we could get away with taking at once. We would run back to my room, we would try it on, swatch the colors, compare. We just couldn't wait to try on makeup of our own. I'm Jordan Gaber. I'm a junior theater major here at Temple within the Temple School of Theater, uh, Film and Media Arts. And I am the acting makeup supervisor for Guys and Dolls. So Guys and Dolls was actually written in the 40s but performed in the 50s. So a lot of hair and makeup are fueled by both older 40s styles and newer 50s styles. They have um, victory rolls in their hair, which is a 40s hairstyle. So a lot of research went into finding um, hairstyles that really encapsulated the 40s, 50s vibe and the meld between the two that brought them both together creatively. I really found a passion for fantasy makeup just because it's something so creative and just so independent. Like you can think of something and then you just create it and nobody can tell you that it's wrong because it's something that you've had in your heart and in your mind that you've brought to life. During Marie's class, I remember there was one day I had just been building up and building up and building up all my makeups and each week was just more and more and it was just like becoming this huge passion project for me as a person. I, I would go out of my way to build my own prosthetics and find certain color paints and I'd purchase colors that weren't in my color wheel just because I wanted to have them and I found myself doing this more and more and more. And after class, Marie came up to me and was like, do you know that you can do this? And I remember asking her, well, what do you mean? She was like, you have a talent. And I said, well, I know that. Like, I really love this. And I can tell that I'm good at it. She goes, no, I mean, like, you can do this as a career. My name is Shanique Savage of Savage Makeup Artistry. I decided to do it for a living because I just fell in love with it being able to completely transform myself into different characters and when I would uh, do like little demonstrations on different people just the response that um, I got back from it like most people I guess prior to they didn't feel like they were beautiful which is odd I thought they were beautiful but they did it and once they saw themselves transformed and I don't know it was just a beautiful feeling that I took part in that making somebody feel more confident in themselves. I tend to use predominantly females because I'm all about like women empowerment and things like that and so yeah that's my favorite canvas to use. My inspirations for makeup has been um, 
It was a lot of special effects, makeup artists, and recently I've been watching, I believe it's called Skin Wars. That's pretty much how I got started doing body paint after watching that show. Skin Wars ripped the lid off the competitive world of professional body painting. Now it's time to find the next generation of skin warriors. If I want to win this $10,000, I got to bring it. My name is Joy Tawney. I'm a body painter as well as a comic artist, illustrator, musician, and muralist. Body painting is totally a living art. The profile of the emu right here becomes a map of one of Sydney's major roads. And on her leg, I'm gonna have the botanical gardens and a road leading to them. It's not something where you end up exactly with what you were planning, but almost always it's better. Body painting is more different from like your typical makeup because it's more like it's just the body, like the body is your only canvas. You're not taking like different prosthetics or other different foreign materials to add to the body. It's just like your skill level and seeing how you can transform either the shape of the body or make them into a different character with just makeup and paint. And it's just more like artistic. It's like instead of putting your work on a canvas, you're putting it on somebody's body. It has been difficult trying to get more models on board because when they hear body painting, they automatically think like, I don't know, I don't want to be around a whole bunch of people new. But with me, I don't want you to be nude around other people as well. So my models always have on like bottoms and either a band or like uh, pasties just to, you know, cover their chest. My name is Caitlin Kennedy. I'm the special effects makeup manager here at Terra Behind the Walls, and I basically help run the room every single night. So we put about 200 actors in makeup in the matter of about a little bit over two hours. I went to a school in Toronto, did a, a quick course in special effects for film, TV, and theater. Actually, about six months after I graduated from school, I found an ad online um, looking for makeup artists for Terra Behind the Walls, and uh, I thought this might be a fun job. I love all of these looks in different ways. You know, like one that I really enjoy is the nurses, you know, the, the ones in Bloodline because it's, I came from the world of beauty. So it's a beauty makeup mixed with this grotesque, you know, these bubbles and it's just, it's gross, but it's also sort of pretty. <laughs> but also, you know, I really love some of our bigger looks that are going, the zombie um, SWAT pieces are some of my favorite things to paint and you know, even something simplistic that just got completely paled out, like white with black, you know, very Japanese horror inspired makeup. Um, I really love how that looks in the attraction. They're in a cell block that's flashing lights and uh, it's strobe actually and fog. And it just looks really cool. They have these stringy wigs. And so I really, I love every single look. It, it would be hard for me to pinpoint just one.
I generally try to walk through the show every couple days or so just to see how it's looking and see where we can scale back a little bit and put more time into somebody else. Welcome to lockdown. Don't get too close to the cells. <laughs> This is a water-based vinyl. It's called watermelon. We actually manufacture slab molds that have these kind of sculpts in them, and we're able to pour the watermelon in to make these small pieces. So these guys get thrown out at the end of the night. Uh, they melt down onto the skin with alcohol. They're really super simple to work with, and it allows us to manufacture them on a very large scale. This is a piece that covers the eye. This is made out of silicone. So this is one of the bigger looks in our show. And this is another silicone piece. This is a zombie brow. So he's just kind of a very uh, straightforward, traditional zombie brow. Silicone's a really great material to work with, but if we were to put silicone on everybody, it would be insanely expensive. We have actually our own custom made skin illustrator palette. So it was kind of starting to become the big thing in makeup at the time. And um, I really was in love with it. I brought that idea to this team and uh, we started using, you know, the special effects palette, the zombie palette, the necromania palette. And um, we decided one year we were gonna buy a new crop of them and uh, we couldn't decide which one we wanted. So when we went on the Premier Products website, we saw that they do custom design palettes. So we reached out and um, were able to get our own design palette. So they took our logo and uh, put it on there and we were able to select the colors that are in here. So these are all kind of like the color palette that we like to use. So it's really cool. We're the, as far as I know, we're the only haunted attraction in the country that, that has a custom um, skin illustrator palette. But you see these, you know, there's a Lost palette. There's a two or three Pirates of the Caribbean palettes and Chronicles of Riddick. So we're like right up there and it was, it's really cool. It's something very special and we're really proud of. We are a team and we work insanely well together. It's a, a really great way to network with other people and learn about what other people do um, outside of here, in theater, in film. Um, you know, we have a lot of bridal artists on our team, a lot of uh, fashion makeup artists. You can learn from everybody and it helps you in your career outside. <音><音><音><音> 完了以后大家伙一拍几合就成立了费城军军社现在已经十九年了一直坚持每年都有很多场演出十二岁就上台了就自己化妆就是自己给自己化多年来就给自己化给自己化妆但是贴片的梳头是专业老师专门专业老师中专老师我这样归因我来自上海进军院的从此就跟我十九岁就进了进军院一直一直干到现在来到
，因为中国的传统对呃国外的朋友也好，他们都很喜欢，真的很喜欢。京剧很麻烦的化妆，生旦净丑不一样。你看老旦有一样，那个老生一样，小生一样，它是根据年龄。这个这个化妆是根据一个年龄，是旦角儿小生是这样，年轻人是这样，比较脸上红润嘛，年轻人。老生老旦他就惨白了，京剧很麻烦的化妆，一道一道的很麻烦，现在已经还。已经有很很多歌星了，以前老是年间，就更麻烦，是拍彩。现在已经有油彩了，已经比以前进步多了，是吧？他咱们这儿是化妆的，就是从服饰、头饰，呃，里头左一层，你也看到里头左一层勒，右一层勒，跟跟他们这个完全是不一样的。嗯，这比较，这都是古典文学，古典的这个京剧里头包括了这个文学。这个艺术，这个的音乐是全有，所以都不同于别的剧种。哎，我除了化妆，呃，跟演员化妆以外，然后包头这一方面也是我们。化妆的一个一部分，但是你要把一个演员的头包好，首先有很重的步骤。你在网上很难，我讲我觉得蛮难，要实际的呢，就是就是爆花，就是属中国的一个传统的鱼树皮，哎、呃，爆花，它是很看的，它是植物性的，啊、呃，真的很。我来美国二十多年，我就是从国内。带来了，一直用，保持到现在，用传统的东西，哎，对演员的皮肤啊，没有什么，起了一个保护的作用，哎，它是很植物性的，哎，那么这个就是片子，因为不同的角色，用不同的，不画不同的片子，贴不同的造型，根据脸型来来看的，哎，不是每个人都是一样的。嗯、很多东西你光从网上学，你里边的东西你不知道，只能表面的东西。但是真正要学，就像人杨老师这样哈，专科，人家是专科学多少年，不是说一说就会，不是那么回事。他不光是不光是化妆，什么打片子、打头套什么的，很多东西，你看古装就这些了，都得人自己做。在国外很累，什么都要自己。你看我跟着李阳了，是吧？化妆、服装，这个舞台上的这个表演都要管，很多事情，道具什么都要管。有这么多人喜欢京剧，而且京剧是咱们的国粹啊，你知道吧？所以年轻人，你看我这儿有刚才那个小孩，你看了吗？几个吧？从几岁就开始，这个这个国粹一定要有传承。你不传承的话，慢慢年轻人就根本不懂，就没有说国外能有这么多小孩，而且家长支持，这是一大幸事，你知道吧？就希望我就希望就是说，大学生也好，年轻人也好，多关注京剧。京剧毕竟是我们中国自己的文化，它是这个这个、国粹，称得上国粹，那不是一般的很浅薄的艺术。所以就是说，希望你们年轻人也多关注京剧。
我也希望这个你们把这个京剧能够呃宣传到这个国际上的这个这个主流社会。